Hello, welcome back to the Wilk Physical Therapy Institute. This is our February issue, and this month we're going to finish up ACL rehabilitation. And for somebody like this, I would anticipate at eight days post-op, you should have maybe two, two and a half centimeters of swelling. And by lunging onto this side, now he's pushing off the involved side. Same thing, if you look from the back, you can see with him leaning forward, he's got good hip flexion, good knee flexion, really firing the glutes and the hamstrings. So when we talk about rotator cuff repairs, obviously there's a lot of variables. Uh, first and maybe foremost is the patient variables, which is the size of the tear and the tissue quality. Uh, come on up. Now what you may want to do when you first start this, I'm supporting his arm. So that way, if he's weak in the back of his shoulder, his arm doesn't drop to the floor, he doesn't have any problems as far as his shoulder uh, maintaining that stable position. So these are the patients who come in and they have raging patellar tendon pain and it's been going on for a while and they just can't get better. Next exercise is a decline squat. What we're using is a slant board that we use to stretch the uh, gastroc soleus or Achilles tendon. We've turned it around so he's at about a 30 degree angle. He's going to do a front step down with the decline squat. Next exercise will be a leg press and what we're going to do is emphasize again the eccentric so we're going to do a two leg out, one leg down and really want him to go at a slow pace. So the rate will go is very similar to the front step down and a decline uh, step down. We want 10 seconds. We want about an eight to 10 second contraction eccentric as well as about a seven second contraction concentric. Uh, Noah uh, is asking the question, has noxious thin been used for shoulder tendinosis? Which is another great question. This evening, we're going to talk about multi-directional instability of the shoulder and a non-operative uh, rehabilitation approach. Five more reps, I'm holding the humeral head. On the fifth rep, or the tenth rep if you will, I ask you to hold and I do a rhythmic stabilization. And again, I'm always working end range stabilization. Very, very important. Now I'm going to do some concentric, eccentric strengthening. But again, the take home message, what's made me new is that I'm holding the humeral head. I'm not just resi resisting distally, because in real lax people, their humeral head can be translated. Now I can tape her if I wanted to but I chose not to in this particular scenario, and I'll show you why in a second. 